Well, good afternoon. It has been four difficult months since we assumed office and President Irfan Ali appointed me as the cabinet member to take lead in the public works sector. Dealing with the Chedijagan International Airport was a matter of top priority. We did tell the, the public we will not accept the airport as is. When I assumed office, I communicated that immediately to the contractor, China Harbor Engineering. We are not accepting the airport as is. It must be fixed. In the master tracking list, there were some 2,000 defects in the main terminal building. And there, were, there was an urgent need for the fixing of 71 items on a critical path to functionality of the airport. Added to that, you would recall that in 2015, the Granger-led administration went into negotiations with China Harbor, and $23 million was removed from actual contract work in benefit of China Harbor, thus resulting in us having a smaller airport and paying the same amount of money, and I will dare say even more, because the evidence will show as we go along it's more. So our first position was to get China Harbor Engineering Company to specifically perform as it relates to the contract that they signed for a design and build airport. So the Irfan Ali administration, President Ali, led this himself, demanding specific performance of the contract, indicating that we will accept nothing less. China Harbor clearly understood that we were unflinching in our demand. And they flew into Guyana, some of their top executives, including a vice president, and they spent in excess of two months. And we were clear of where we were going. What we have now is the final ink of that long, torturous period of negotiations and ensuring that the people of Guyana get value for money and that we have a signature project, project to deliver to the people of Guyana, the Chedi Jagan International Airport. I'd like to express thanks to President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali for the leadership and guidance that he gave in this project. And I'd like to single out two of my technical people who worked with me day and night in these negotiations, ensuring compliance, compliance with the FIDIC rules, ensuring that the designs are being fulfilled, and that is Ms. Carissa Gooding, who is a project engineer and the project manager from the Ministry of Public Works, and Mr. Ramesh Gear, who's the chief executive officer of the Chedi Jagan International Airport. And of course, they were ably supported by the supervisory consultant firm that has been engaged by the government of Guyana overseeing the project at CGIA. What we have essentially been able to do, number one, is to get China Harbor to agree to fix the front of the airport. 
So what China Harbor has to do when you drive up to the airport, they have to install a new curtain wall that covers the whole length of the airport. I know in the press statement you would have seen it. It says a departure terminal. But in the technical language, everything that you see from the front is what is called departure, and what you see from the other side is called arrival. So they have to install a glass curtain wall, a, fa a facade, creating a new image of the airport. And we objected to it looking like if it was a warehouse or something of the sort. In the construction of that facade, they have to put in place a steel structure in the front, which will eventually accommodate 18 concession areas, 10 of which will be available to passengers, and eight will be available to the public. That will be for food courts and other amenities that people who are attending to the airport will need to use. So that was the first victory that we were able to get. I would call it a victory because it was a, it was a long battle and a struggle um, to get there. So that will mean that we'll be creating another 30,000 square feet of commercial space based upon this new agreement. We lost significant square footage in that Granger-led administration renegotiated contract where we lost 23 million. We now, with this new arrangement, putting in place arrangement with a superstructure to allow for 30,000 square feet of commercial space. And that would allow for concessions, 10 for passenger use, and eight for, for uh, the public. The new commercial area will offer much needed services. You know all of us who use the area, the airport. You go there now, you can't get something to eat. A flight is delayed. There's absolutely no space. We are remedying that. The next thing that is important in this new arrangement, all arriving and departing passengers will be able to end plane and deplane using passenger boarding bridges. In the present construct, the larger size aircraft, what you call code D and code E, if they landed at Guyana, there was no boarding bridges to accommodate them. You'd have had to deplane and walk 700 feet to get to uh, immigration and customs in rain or sun. We insisted that that is not what we agreed to. So China Harbor now has to build a new corridor with facilities to accommodate two additional air bridges. And those corridors and facilities must be able to accommodate Code D and Code E aircraft. All of the works, the additional works that needs to be done at the airport, the cost will be borne and must be borne by China Harbor in keeping with this new agreement. The New boarding bridges that are to be constructed will have to accommodate, and that is something we negotiated hard because of the distance of walking, concession areas, which would mean apart from the main departure terminal, when you walk down the corridors, there must be accommodation for concessions, people could do their last minute shopping or you could get your cup of coffee down at the end 
so you don't have to be walking all the distance to get back to the main um, departure area. The extended runway, which is a matter that is still to be addressed, it must be completed and commissioned by March 2021. So the extended runway must be commissioned and completed by March 2021. All the outstanding defects, which I spoke about earlier, the 2,000 plus the 71 critical items, must be completed by check no later than September 2021 under this new addendum that has been signed. China Harbor will not be able to claim or to request any financial consideration from the government of Guyana as it relates to the works that has to be done. They have to do it themselves. All the new built out that we're talking about to accommodate the 30,000 square feet, the extended corridors for the two air bridges, it must be done in such a manner as to cater for future expansion of the airport, which is possibly at Terminal 2. So the specifications have been all clearly um, spelled out. Now, what we have here is a significant improvement of what we inherited. And I repeat for em emphasis, a significant improvement. Those of you who did the walkthrough with His Excellency the President, as well as with myself as Minister of Public Works, when I checked on the airport after we got into government, would have known that what we had there was unacceptable. And we demanded specific performance. And out of these negotiations, this is the final addendum that has been signed by permanent secretary as the accounting officer for the ministry has signed the agreement with the project manager for China Harbor, Mr. Kevin, uh, who has been here on that project. So that's where we are. Uh, there are some administrative things that we would have done because the media was asking about what we are doing. And I could say now that a lot has been done that we did not disclose. Because when you are in negotiations, you don't want to go into bad faith. But this matter of the airport in Guyana was a matter that was being addressed at the highest levels in China. And as a result of, of that kind of action that we would have taken, whether it's the parent company, whether it's the China Exim Bank, or the leadership of China, President Ali and his administration spared no effort in standing up for the people of Guyana to ensure that we get value for money. And what we have here is the best that we could have gotten out of the circumstances, and I believe we are having a significant improvement. Thank you. Your questions. What is the? There is a performance bond valued thirteen point nine million U.S. dollars that a Chinese contractor has to keep operative, that if they fail to perform, we could draw down on that bond, 13.5 million US dollars. That is what existed, and they have to keep it open. Not 
no monies that was part of the original contract will be used for the additional works. The only monies that are remaining on the contract as when we took office was five million US dollars for an advance bond and 1.2 million US dollars in a retention bond. And as a matter of fact, had we not gotten this signed agreement, we had put all the necessary mechanisms in place for demands on those two bonds. The 5 million US and the 1.2 million retention bond. No monies from the original loan of 130 million <coughs> from the China Exim Bank will be used to finance the additional works. China Harbor and their parent company have to stand that responsibility. I think China Harbor from top to bottom have recognized that this administration being led by President Ali and yours truly the Minister of Public Works who has direct responsibility will not tolerate what was tolerated before. And it is because of that that they're at the table. Like I said, we have engaged China at the highest levels expressing our dissatisfaction on the airport, demanding specific performance of the contract that led to the settlement agreement. I can tell you, the Prime Minister wrote, the Attorney General wrote, yours truly wrote, all of the relevant agencies to exert the kind of pressure that needed to be exerted for us to get specific performance of this project. And thankfully, China Harbor saw the wisdom in coming to the table for settlement agreement because they recognize there's definitely a change in regime. We will not tolerate nonsense, and we demanded specific performance, and that's where we are.